All right, you guys. God bless you guys. Peace and grace, and welcome to This Is It, 4, 3, 2, 1. Before the fire. <laughs> guys, um, I got saved 20, 20 years ago in an alley here in San Antonio. For those of y'all that know my testimony, it's something like Paul on the road to Damascus. It's a whole, it was an event. My, my getting saved was not just an altar call. It was something way, way different. Um, I think the best thing for me to do is just to show you guys a clip from Miami right now. The Lord told me he wanted me to go to Florida. There was someone that needed help and I wasn't sure is this why you're sending me to Florida? You're sending me to this person that needs help? That's a long drive to go um, to help someone. I, I, I was working, trying to work things out on the phone. The Lord told me he needed me to go to Florida. And I, and I mean, in my prayer, I was like, okay, I keep hearing this. Could you confirm that? And then he slam dunked it. And then I said, okay, I'm right in front of Corey and Zach. I was like, I got to go to Florida. There's no way. I'm not going to Florida. He confirmed it, but I still wasn't sure what, what my goal was. Um, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Just like when I went to Chinati, the desert, I had no idea where I was supposed to skydive. He told me to tell everybody and publicly, the Lord is sending me to Chinati. I don't know what it's all about. He told me I'm going to skydive into the desert. I don't know what it's all about. He guaranteed he would find me a way to play and show me where I'm Scott. I mean, that's a huge step of faith to find an airplane out in the desert where I was. It's, that's beyond a miracle that has a door that opens during flight without there being a drop zone around. That's next to impossible. And then a, a guy that would have a plane or a helicopter that would let you do it. Someone that would carry the insurance, all that kind of stuff. It was impossible. But the Lord told me to commit to everybody publicly. And he would make it happen. And he did. And you remember what happened. He gave me two halves of the same rock in the riverbed where he showed me he wanted my LZ. The miracles were in insane. He made sure a flash flood help happened during the time that I was driving to go meet my airplane to, to fly me over my LZ, which was an hour away. I had to drive an hour to meet my airplane. And then... When I left to go meet the airplane, a flash flood came and just tore through the canyon and my LZ, my blue tarp, didn't get washed away because the Lord had given me instructions before I left on what to do with the tarp. I thought it was weird. He told me to anchor it down every grommet. He told me to put um, gravel over the leading edge. I thought, wow, that's weird. Maybe it's going to rain or something. It did. It flash flooded. My LZ was split exactly in half. There was one triangle that was perfectly clean, one that was filthy dirty. And the Lord showed me that's the system. One, there's one half that's clean, one half that's dirty. They commingle, light and dark commingling. Anyway, y'all know the story. I'm not going to go over it. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll bring up some old folders and show you how insane. For those of y'all that have been here, this is going to blow your mind. For those of y'all that don't know this ministry, I'll just buckle up and try and go for the ride with us. Okay, here we go. So anyway, so here we go again. So the Lord communicated to me, I want you to go to, to Florida. I wasn't sure, just like I wasn't sure about Chinati, but I knew he told me to do it. I asked, even though he confirmed it, I said, could you, is there any way you could walk me into that art gallery again? Is there any way, Father, you could just walk me into that art gallery and give me the confidence that you gave me to go to Chinati? For those of y'all, y'all remember the painting, Searching for Greener Pastures, Melvin Warren, Chief Watchman. Y'all remember all the miracles? These are miracles. These are mind-bending miracles. The Lord walked me into that same art gallery to show me, I want you to go to Florida. And I just was like, oh my Lord. He showed me there's a storm coming. So a strange storm coming. The pits can open. I did what he said. I went to Florida. He confirmed everything. Let me show you where, where I ended up in Florida you know, when you have a cell phone like this, I have a couple that get me everywhere I need to go. And my final destination, I knew that once I went to uh, where, you know, he had me stopping to help this one, you know, like the title you saw in the video, the one sheep that needed help. He sent me to go minister to somebody that is caught in a rut. They're caught up in just, they're caught up in sin and they needed help. 
So I knew I was going there. But then also there was someone that I haven't seen in a long time. One of my children I haven't seen in a long time. And the Lord told me, yeah, go see your child while you're there. And so that was my final destination. And I plotted that in uh, to my phone. And uh, I'm not, I don't know Miami. I've never been there. And uh, let me show you where I ended up. I'm going to show you a little video of where I ended up in Miami. And then I'm going to pause that. And then I'm going to do a video. I'll show you a video I did just a little while ago. I went down to the alley where I got saved, to Peacock Alley. And I made a little video kind of wrapping things up. Even though part of my, the end of my video got cut off, I'm still going to play it for you. And then I'm going to show you everything in between. Okay, so if you'll just bear with me and just go for the ride. <laughs> Get ready. Okay, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Heavenly Father God. Uh, Mikael, who is like El? Who is like El, the Almighty God? I'll tell you what, nobody. And thank you for letting me participate in your amazing masterpiece and let me be part of it. Uh, I pray for the world. Uh, but specifically, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray for the church. And for the safety and the well-being of those that you've called out of the darkness in your marvelous light. Amen. All right. Let's go for a ride. Okay, this is my final destination. This, this is where my thousands of miles of driving, even though I was going to see someone on the way that needed ministering to, I said, well, because I'm going to be there in Florida to minister to this person, I'm going to continue. And my, my final destination will be at this spot. I've never been there. I documented it. Let's watch real quick. So I'm doing this as a, a follow-up video. I told everybody I was leaving. The Lord had called me to head out. I, I wasn't sure of my whole destination, but uh, he sent me to help somebody that needed help. Um, and then the next part of the journey is, is here. And I'm at the corner of Peacock and 38th. And on the, um, you can see it right behind me, Peacock and 38th. And on my phone, it said, you have arrived at your destination. Um, Peacock, Peacock behind me, Peacock. Peacock and 38th is beyond insane because I got saved in Peacock Alley. That's where I came down the stairs, was in Peacock Alley. And um, Peacock Alley is the night I got saved. And for me to arrive, it says, you've arrived at your destination. And it's Peacock and 38th. And as I pulled over, it says, your moment starts here. Because I, I pulled up here, I had to make a U-turn. Um, trying to enlarge the screen so anyway for it to say you have arrived at your destination and then for it to be for it to be peacock and 38th I'm trying to go this way get a better shot there you go peacock and 38th there you go so to arrive at peacock and 38th um, as my destination and it says your moment starts here now I haven't told y'all all the crazy stuff that happened today before I got here it's beyond the human brain it literally is beyond the human brain but I'm just documenting I'm here at the corner of Peacock and 38 the Lord told me to look up 38 in the Bible the third the number 38 in the Bible means sanctification sanctified and consecrated 20 years of walking with the Lord 20 years of believing and doing what he told me to do and here I am at the corner of Peacock and 38th that's past the human brain guys that's beyond the that's beyond human comprehension anyway um, we'll see where this all goes I'm gonna document this and I'll uh, put it in the folder, and I'll do a video on it tonight, hopefully. Okay, now, I can understand right now from your point of view, you may not you may not be uh, as shocked as I was right there, but just hold on. 
we have a whole folder together now to get there. I went down to the alley tonight because I, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to deliver this. I, you know, I'm going to tell you what the message is right now. Ready? Here's the message. The end is at the door. The locusts are coming. The pit's opening. And then the end of the world is here. Let me show you what he showed me on the trip. Let me show you um, what I did just a few minutes ago. Okay, so you just saw me down in Peacock, on Peacock and 38 in Florida a few days ago. And now you're going to see tonight, I went down to the alley where I got saved. And then we're going to do all the stuff in between. Okay, just bear with me. Quick video just to wrap this up. Right over there, that's Peacock. It says one way. It's Peacock. And it's pointing right at that stained glass window, which is Adam in the garden and Christ ascending into heaven. That's where I got saved. Those stairs right above me, right up there. It's actually that set right down there. That set right down there. Those are the stairs I came down the night I got saved. I'm in Peacock Alley right now. I'm just going to spin in a circle. This is Peacock Alley. This is where I got saved. I ended up at the corner of Peacock and 38th. I can assure you the Lord works in the most mysterious, most mind-boggling ways that you could even imagine. And there is no limit to His grace. You can't outgive Him. You can't outlove Him. But I can tell you what, if you haven't taken the free gift of God at this point, I can assure you that the 20 years that I've been walking with the Lord is coming to an end now. The time of grace is ending. The time of wrath is beginning. It's no accident that he had me put V for vengeance on a parachute. I love everybody in Christ, and I mean that. I would reach over a cliff to grab the hand of my worst enemy. I would, because I don't want anyone to suffer what's coming. But 20 years ago, I came down those stairs right there. Those stairs were horizontal, and they went down to the ground. And Michael stepped up to me and said, pray with me, my brother. And we prayed our Father to the sky, and water and light came down on me. And that's when I was called to service for the Lord God. I just came back from a trip from Miami. And my phone told me I had reached my final destination because I had plotted in an address for a several thousand mile trip. And it said, you have reached your destination. You have reached your destination. And I got out and I was at the corner of Peacock, like I'm here in Peacock Alley, but I'm in Florida. When I got out of my car, I was at the corner of Peacock and 38th. And the Lord told me, look up 38. It means sanctified, set apart. The night I got saved, those stairs turned 45 degrees and came down on the ground. And this is why I prayed and I received Christ. I became a harbinger at that time. And I, the Lord has let me solve the riddle of ages. Here's the riddle. We're angels. We're trapped in human bodies. There's a superhuman angel demon spirit. Right side up angel, upside down demon. One eye goes up, one eye goes down to the pit. Superhuman angel demon spirit that runs you until you get converted. When you get converted, you're given eyes that are single, both eyes are up. You can see the kingdom of God once you get saved. You can see you're in an illusion. This whole place is an illusion and you can see it. And then once you see it, you can make your confession, ask God to forgive you. Then you get born again, you get the Holy Spirit, your eyes become single. You get turned back the other direction to God. The pit is down, heaven is up. You have one eye that goes up, one eye that goes down. When you get converted, you have two eyes that go up. That's why the Catholic Church, the word Catholic, kataholikos, 
means completely down. And I was called out of a Catholic family and they became my worst enemies because I got converted. The time of grace has come to an end. I guarantee it. The race of locusts that have been assimilating the souls of locusts, from the assimilating the souls of angels from the beginning and turning them into locusts, that time has arrived. I'm a servant of the Most High God, El, the Almighty God. Jesus is Emmanuel, which means Imanu with us is in El, the Almighty God. The time of grace has come to an end. The time of wrath is now. It's upon us. It's here. The time I came down those stairs was when the Lord called me to warn you. I've warned you. Same as Ezekiel. I blew the trumpet. I warned the people. And now if you die in your sins, it's your own fault. The crossroads is here. Repent and believe the word or be damned. That's the message. I love you in Christ, guys. It's time to go. Okay, so again, that was from tonight. The, video, the first video you saw standing on the street corner during the day was from a few days ago at the corner of Peacock and 38th in Miami. By the way, the address that I mapped in Florida did not have the word Peacock in it or 38th. I was going on 37th Avenue. And so it put me right at the corner of Peacock and 38th, someplace I've never been. Can you imagine if you're me and the Lord told you after all these things I've done, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Florida. I want you to minister to this person. And I go there and he goes, go see, go see your child. And I ended up at the corner of Peacock and 38th. 38th means consecrated, set apart. Okay, so... There's 38, just so you know. It means consecration, sanctification, the process of making or becoming holy, set apart, sanctification, holiness, consecration. The use, use of the believer being progressively transformed by the Lord into his likeness, similarity, or nature. Okay, so now let me go and show you this folder leading up to all this. Okay, so I mean, y'all may have remembered that I had done a video that said uh, level up. One of the last videos I did is called The Time is Fulfilled, Leveled Up. Right after that, right after that, before I left on this trip, and when the Lord told me I want you to go, I was going to take care of some, like, just paying my bills at the grocery store, and I thought it was kind of funny. It said level up. So I took a picture of me smiling, getting ready to go on my trip. As for my testimony, everybody's heard this. As for my testimony, when I came down from those stairs, waiting for me was Michael. And he stepped up and he said, pray with me, my brother. I knew he was my brother. I couldn't explain to you how, but I knew this was my brother. He was my kindred. And he stepped up and said, pray with me, my brother. We prayed our father and water and light came down on me. And Michael stepped up to me and said, pray with me, my brother. And we prayed our father. So in Peacock Alley, the night I got saved, Michael prayed with me and he said, pray. He's the one that said, pray with me, my brother. Um, let me show you what the name Michael means real quick. Tell me if you think this is kind of fascinating that everything I do is about turning you up because you've been inverted. You've been turned down. So we need to get you turned back up. That's that's since the beginning of my ministry. 100% nylon, turn it the other direction, turn it upside down, 100% no line. The word nylon, if you invert it, becomes N-O-L-Y-N, no line. In order to receive truth, and I got to deal with this in a big way on my trip, the person I was trying to minister to has never quit lying. They quit drinking, but they never quit lying. I told him we need to get you to the point to where you quit lying and don't worry about the drinking. The drinking will take care of itself. You can't continue in a world where you're living a duplicitous life and you're lying about this and lying about that. And then you're having problems with other stuff. The problems are merely a symptom like a cold. When you have a cold, you sneeze, you cough, you have the chills. 
when you haven't been when you haven't been converted, you have symptoms like revelries and drunkenness and lying and deceit. Those are like symptoms of the cold. And we got down to that. That was part of my mission was to help this person see through the reality that we were dealing with something that wasn't an alcohol problem. It was a truth and living a duplicitous life problem. And at the end of this video, I'm going to, I'm going to ask everybody, if you have any lies in your life that you've told, come clean, no matter what, no matter what the cost, tell the truth, no matter what the cost. Here we go. Isn't it fascinating that in Daniel 12, and it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up which standeth, look at the words, which standeth, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, there shall be a time of trouble, the word trouble means a female rival right there, it means adversary, tribulation, so the time, the great tribulation is the time of the female rival, isn't that fascinating with everything I've shown you about the twin female being the most evil energy there is, so there shall be a time of trouble, But I want you to look at the word Michael right here. See the word Michael? Michael. It's it's a conjunction of two words. It's Mika and then L. See, Mika L. So Mika means who is like. That's what Mika means. Who is like. And then L is Hebrew word for ten, the Almighty God. So the name Michael is Mika L. Who is like L. Mika means who is like. And then El is the Almighty God. Emmanuel, Jesus, the coming of the Messiah. Imanu, with us is El, the Almighty God. That's why Elohim doesn't like him. They don't want him here because he's here to convict you. If you don't get converted, the truth of who he is is your conviction. And that's why they don't want any, they don't want truth here. If you watch the world now, it's the biggest pile of lies I've ever seen. It's absolutely insane. So here's the name Michael. It means who is like El, the Almighty God. That's what Michael means. Mika, who is like, see right here, watch. Who is like God. But the word God is El, the Almighty God. I'll make it a different color. So who is like El, the Almighty God. That's what Michael means. Okay, so now I'm, I'm driving that into you for a reason. Because when the Lord told me I want you to go to Houston in front of Corey and Zach, I prayed. I said, do you want me to go to Houston? I need you to confirm it. And he slam dunked immediately. Yes, I want you to go supernaturally without getting to a whole other testimony. Right in front of two witnesses, he slam dunked. You need to go. And I went, okay, I'm going for sure. So I committed to the trip in front of two witnesses. And they were like, wow. I said, yep, there's no way out of that. I'm going for sure. So I went over to the post office. And when I was at the post office, I said, Lord, you know what? When you got me to go to Chinati, it was so crazy the way you took me into that art gallery. He did the same thing to get me to go to Black Rock. He walked me into the same art gallery. You guys may remember the testimonies. I'm not going to go over them, but they're insane. How in the world was he able to 100% slam dunk? getting me to go to these places using this art gallery. It's mind-boggling. So I thought just as kind of almost a joke. I said, Lord, I'm going no matter what. I'm going to Florida. That's a heck of a long drive, but I'll go. You told me to go. It sure would be cool if I could walk into that art gallery and somehow you could tell me you want me to go to Florida and show me that that's where you want me to go. No. That art gallery specializes in West Texas landscapes. Like you go into that art gallery, it's, it's blue bonnets, uh, uh, mountains, uh, desert, Texas landscapes. That's it, West Texas. That's what, if you look at the old uh, pictures in the, in, in the old folders, you know, that's all you'll see on the walls. Except the other time when he turned on the light to the back room. So anyway, I walked into that. I said, Lord, could you possibly take me in there again? And I was kind of kidding around, to be honest. And I heard the Lord say, go in. And I was like, really? And I walked in the art gallery, and the guy there, is, he remembers me. He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hey, how you doing? And immediately I looked over, and there were some new paintings. 
Well, this place is so West Texas that if there's some new paintings in there, they really, you know, something that's not West Texas, they really stood out. And so I looked over, now listen, this is going to get into everything that I've done since I've got saved with the whole, uh, you know, Vatican, the bugs, the insects, locusts, all that. And I looked over on the wall and there were two paintings uh, and I looked directly at them and I was like, well, as you can see right here, this is like landscape, landscapes, Buffalo. But these two paintings right here that I'm circling, I looked over and I immediately saw them and I said, wow, you got some new paintings. That's the first thing I said was, wow, you've got some new paintings. And he goes, yeah. And I walked over there and I went, oh, interesting, because I was asking the Lord, you want me to go to Florida? And, uh, these are sailboats on the water and it looks like the beach. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of wild. And I walked over there and I saw immediately hidden in all these watermarks. This one's probably the most easiest to see. There's a face coming up out of the water. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. Here's the mouth right here. So coming out of the water is his face. Eye, eye, nose, mouth. But there's faces all through here and it's done with intent. And then as I looked up here in the clouds, I'm like, oh, wow. There's a lot of really evil looking faces coming out of there. And I, I heard in my spirit, look at the name of the painting, check it out. And so I did. I, I popped it on my uh, phone. I photographed it and it said, strange storm coming. And I heard the Lord tell me, pay attention. Well, it's $3,200. Three is the angel of the bottomless pit. 200 is locust. And I've been telling everybody for a long time, that that's who I am. Part of my identity in Christ is I am the guy that is warning everybody that Revelation 9, verse 11, they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. 9-11, the bombing of the twin towers represented the twin system that's run by the angel of the bottomless pit. He runs the right side up, upside down system, and that's how he's destroying all the angels, and he's feeding his locust army using the serpent race above ground with people like Lady Gaga that have an insect on the top half of her dress and a serpent on the bottom. They're the insect race. They're the serpent race. I've shown it to you over and over. The Vatican's a snake. The largest halter in the world's a dead sheep. The largest halter in the world is an insect harvesting angels. So when I saw that and I saw, good God, it says a, a strange storm coming, angel of the bottomless pit locusts, Lord tell me to pay close attention. And as I looked at the painting, I saw all the entities that were woven into the painting into this part right here. And you can go look yourself, go look up in the red. It's just a bunch of demonic faces. And I went, wow, that's crazy. And then right above it is another painting. And I just went, wow, that's crazy. And I saw this. And as I looked at it, I went, oh my God, does that remind y'all of something like Ozzy Osbourne, The Warning? Remember in the Bible, there was darkness over all the land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour when Jesus was crucified. Well, in the Ozzy Osbourne video, when, when you get to the two minute 55 second mark and they rotate this upside down and you see your 666, there you go. And then the pit opens. And then what comes up out of the pit? Okay, here we go. And here comes the demonic entities. And I'm just going to, I'm going to move it down really slow. On, on the speed because we're going to have to slow this down quite a bit to, for you to see it. So in the Ozzy Osbourne video right here, watch. So the pit opens and they're coming out. And here comes the pit opening up, the eye. Okay, here comes their eye, the eye from the pit. Watch. And what's happening? Okay, take a look. And if this is in slow motion. Okay, so take a look. What's going on? Are those just like faces and demonic looking entities? And what's going on? And they're coming up. Okay, like, looks like a vampire, whatever. Tongue sticking out. Okay, see the staircase because they're coming up out of the pit. There's the devil. They're all coming up. It's a staircase. The devil's coming up. Six and nine. They've rotated them. Patient number nine. 
They're all coming up out of the pit. All the entities, here they come. That's why in the Ozzy Osbourne video, it literally shows an eye opening and he's getting an injection and the eye opens up and it literally at the very moment on the, on the screen, well, I think it's three, two, six. The Lord said, look it up. It means I am alive again. I have been revived while their eye is opening the eye from the pit. Remember the band, The Warning, the, the, the three girls? Zero one one zero one. Was it? I'm free. Free. Who's free? The angel of the bottomless pit. That's what I've been telling you. That's what all my videos have been about in the past month or so. It's like, here it comes, guys. The pit is opening. That's been all I'm telling you, right? I've been, go back and watch them. The pit's opening. They're coming. Ozzy Osbourne video, patient number nine. They're coming. The pit's opening. That's what's in their videos. Now I'm going to Florida. And I said, you really want me to go to Florida? What's up? He walks me in that art gallery. It says a strange storm is coming. And it's two sailboats going opposite directions. And it's at the beach. That art gallery doesn't have beach paintings. The storm that's coming in the painting is a bunch of entities coming up. That's the storm that's in the painting. That's why it's titled A Strange Storm Coming. Because the artist that did the painting knows the strange storm that's coming is the pit's opening. That's the reason for the title of the painting. That's why the number is three, angel of the bottomless pit, 200, locusts. <laughs> okay, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, the Lord's not kidding around. He wants me to go to Florida. Watch this. The pit's opening. Do you see the like the twin thing? That's what's coming. There it is. Watch. See the, the stairway going up for the devil? Watch. There we go. Okay. Aussie video. And this is slow-mo. The, there you go. Okay. Here's the Ozzy Osbourne. I'm alive again. Did you see the pitchfork? The W? There you go. Just keeps going. The pit's rising. Pit's rising. Pit's rising. The devil's coming up out of the pit. And that's what this patient number nine video is about. I went over it with you guys, remember? Okay, so you guys have probably gotten the idea right there. Let's go back to let's go back to the art gallery. So now here's the painting right above. There's a strange storm coming. I want you to look right here at the bottom. You see the fee, this is a female in art, there's what's called movement. You see the movement is upward. Look at the hair. See the hair going up? So the movement is all going up. See the movement going up? Look at this guy. Look at the glasses. Hexagon, hexagon. How many times have I shown you that? Look at the faces. Look at the profile. Does this look like demonic or does this look happy? Does this look like a demonic thing? Or does this like, do you think that's supposed to be Batman right there? Or is that really an infinity symbol? Is it an infinity symbol that also makes the number three? And is that a W or is this Batman? Is this like the uh, a mask or is it an actual face? This is, represents the pit coming up, guys. Look right here. Look at this. So when the Lord showed me that, when he walked me into the art gallery, he told me, go into the art gallery, I'll show you. Yeah, I want you to go to Florida. I saw these two sailboats immediately, and I'm like, oh, that's insane. By the way, when you look at this strange storm coming, turn it upside down and look at all the faces in here. Look at all the faces that are hidden in here. Look at the red. Look, easiest thing, just look right here. Uh, look over here. It's, look over here. It's the same thing as the Aussie thing. That's why... It's titled, There's a Strange Storm Coming. That's why above it, there is the pit rising. So I said, all right, Lord, you got me. I'm going. And I said, let's go. I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's go do whatever it is we got to do. I don't know if I'm going to come back. I had no idea. I packed up. I started driving. I started driving, and I got several hundred miles away, and I had to pee really bad. And, I, and there was a Bucky's. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bucky's. But a Bucky's is the gas station in the United States. If you see a Bucky's, you don't pass it up, especially if you got to pee, especially if you need gas and you want something to eat. Bucky's is the quintessential, most cool, 
uh, refill gas station there is that I've ever seen. And I've got to pee and I'm hungry and I need gas. And I see, wow, there's Bucky's next exit. How cool is that? I didn't take the exit. I was going to take it and I heard in my spirit, no, take the next exit. How weird. What? Don't go to Bucky's. What? So I was like, all right. So I took the next exit and I pulled up right next to this guy. I was like, what in the world? Now, don't forget, I'm the bug guy. I'm the guy that's told, you know what? Let's just do a very quick recap on bugs. Besides the largest altar in the world being a large bug, I put it, I put that altar right there on the Victoria Police badge. Uphold the right. So remember when the Victoria Police were being really mean to all their, uh, you know, all the uh, people that were out in Victoria because there are patches of bug coming up out of the pit. That's what the Victoria Police patch is. Uh, in the Vatican, the guy in the slave collar that you've seen a thousand times, I've drawn on all the lines. When you invert it, it's a bug coming up out of the pit. And I simply put it on the Victoria Police patch just to make fun of the Victoria Police. That's an insect coming up out of the pit. So, Without getting into too much, you know, uh, trust me, there's bugs coming. Y'all know that that's what I've been pounding the pavement with for a long time. Let's do one quick row. There's the Vatican, largest altar in the world. The entire part of that building, the mouth of the serpent, is an insect harvesting a dead sheep, which is in the form of a bunch of angels harvesting the semen. Here two girls are with the same exact tattoo, which is a bug. That's a rudimentary image of a bug and mandibles where their labium are, or their labia. The word labium, by the way, means the mouth of an insect. So anyway, without getting into all the bug stuff and doing an entire video on that, it's a, a no-brainer that I've been telling everybody that the human host body system was nothing more than a transmutation device in order to kill angels. And here I am pulling up next to the bug reaper because instead of going to Bucky's, which is where you have to go, the Lord told me, no, get off on the next exit. And I did. And I pulled up next to that guy and I went. <laughs> I was like, okay, the Lord had already shown me. Don't forget, he'd walked me into the art gallery and said, there's a strange storm coming. I want you to go to Florida. And I'm like, oh my God, what's the strange storm that's coming? Well, in the painting, it's the pit of me. Even the cost of the painting is three angel of the bombless pit, the number 200 locusts. And I'm like, good God, the painting above it is the pit of me. No different than the Aussie video. No different than the band of warning. Uh, 0111, I'm free. No different than the Birmingham games. And the beast has been set free and enraged by past hurts and injustices, has broken its chains. And the women in a parallel act of emancipation have broken their chains. I mean, it's all the same thing over and over and over. And now I'm being told to go to Florida. Because there's a strange storm coming. Y'all getting this? Can you imagine if you're me and you pull over instead of going to Bucky's, which is like the place to go? And then I'm like, okay, get off on the next thing. And you pull up next to the Bug Reaper hearse. What? And I was like, oh my God. So there's the Bug Reaper. And I pull up and I look at the guy and I'm like, what in the world? And so get ready. Okay, who did I... Who did I meet in that alley? Uh, who who prayed with me? Michael, right? I told you guys. Yeah, I prayed. It was an angel. Michael, pray with me, my brother. Water and light came down on me. Down on me. A lot of people didn't believe me. I said, I understand. But now the evidence speaks for itself. You're speaking to the guy that showed the world that the bombings are all printed on U.S. currency. You're also speaking to the guy that showed the world that the Vatican is a snake wearing a crown and the building next to it is birthing a snake Parthenogenesis, Virgin Genesis, a reptilian race that started the host body system as a trap to lure angels in to destroy them, to create a locust army by getting the angel in the duplicitous system called the host body. And unless they turn back to God with their whole heart, then the flesh destroys them and their soul goes to the pit. Mystery solved. Okay, well, when I pulled up and I saw this guy, I'm like, okay, I've obviously made the right decision to doing what the Lord said. And I pulled up and I looked at the guy, I'm like, Okay, that's insane. Let me show you a couple 
coincidences just real quick. Let me show you. So remember, I started my entire walk with the Lord in the Peacock Alley. I prayed with Michael. Pray with me, my brother. Okay, well, when the Lord told me I want you to go to Florida and he walked me into this art gallery and it said a strange storm coming, see the name Michael Frary right there? Okay, well, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when the Lord sent me to Chinati and he walked me into that same art gallery, he told me, go in the building with the wind blades. I was like, go in the building with the wind blades? You want me to go in there? Go in the building with the wind blades. I'm going to show you. I want you to go to Chinati. And I walked in. There was a giant painting on the wall. And I, I, I walked in. I'd never been in there before. And the guy's like, hey, how's it going? I was like, hey, I've never been here before. He goes, yeah, I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes. Well, Chinati is West Texas. Big Bend. And I was like, oh, my God. The Lord's telling me to go to Chinati. And then there is a giant painting the first painting, the number one painting on display, I walked right up to it. It was a shepherd leading sheep through the desert in Chinati. And the Lord told me, pay attention. And I'm like, and then I heard the Lord say, look at the artist. This is Chinati, remember? And I asked the guy, hey, can I take a picture? He said, sure. Melvin Warren. That was the name of the artist. Melvin Warren. The Lord told me to look up the name Melvin and Warren. Melvin means chief. Warren means watchman. The Lord told me, you're my chief watchman. I want you to go to the desert. Trust me. Chief watchman, Melvin Warren. <laughs> okay, I was just like, I'm going to the desert. I'm taking my parachute. The Lord's going to tell me where he wants me to jump. And he did. He gave me two houses of the same rock. He split my LZ directly in half, and he put me in a building that had been split in half. It was made up of round river stones, and the whole building got picked up off the ground, put back together, and set down on a rock foundation. The Every single one is an insane miracle. So now, when the Lord tells me, I want you to look up the name Michael and the last name Frary, I was like, you got to be kidding. So remember the night I got saved, what did... What did Michael say to me? My brother. And Michael stepped up to me and said, pray with me, my brother. Okay, he said, pray with me, my brother. And now I'm looking at a painting by a guy named Michael Frary. And the Lord told me to look it up. Michael means who is like El, the Almighty God. And Frary means brother. <laughs> You know, like Melvin Warren means chief watchman. I want you to go to the desert. Now I want you to go to Florida. There's a strange storm coming. And the name of that artist is Michael, who is like El, the Almighty God, and brother. And I was like, this is insane. So I did what the Lord said. I packed up. I started heading out to Florida. And next thing you know, instead of going to Bucky's, I get off on the next exit and I'm talking to this guy right here, and I'm like, oh my God, what in the world is this, the bug reaper? Because I happen to be the guy that's against the bugs, and I'm the guy exposing the largest altar in the world is a bug. It's an insect harvesting a dead sheep made up of angels and semen, male and female reproductive systems. Those are facts. <laughs> okay, now, y'all ready? Okay, hold on to your hat. So, I asked the guy, I'm like, I, okay, I gotta, can I photograph your, he goes, yeah, open the back door, have a look. And I'm like, really? Open the back door. And I open it up, and there's a giant uh, tank in there with a hose. And he goes, yeah, it's for killing all the bugs. And I'm like, there's a strange storm coming. I want you to go to, <laughs> I want you to go to Miami. I'm like, okay. And so I'm sitting there trying to process, and the guy hands me two magnets. You know, like the ones I showed you the other day? He has me two magnets. He goes, here you go. These are for you. He had his name on it. His name is Anthony. Remember, where did I get saved? The St. Anthony, right? It means who is, uh, Anthony means priceless one. You know what exposito, his last name means? To expose. <laughs> what did I expose? The entire bug system, serpent race that feeds the bugs in the pit. You starting to catch on? <laughs> okay, I was like, good God. What? The bug reapers are here. Let me just show you. I document everything, folks. Here you go. 
Let's look at the Bug Reaper video real quick, and then we'll go over the pictures. Here we go. Here we go. This is me freaking out. Here we go. Uh, okay, you're not even going to believe what's hap going to happen here. I just pulled over the Bug Reaper. The story behind this is so insane. Look at this. The Bug Reaper. It's insane. The story I have to tell you right now is insane. The Bug Reaper. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Who the hell pulls over and meets a guy in a hearse that says the Bug Reaper and he hands me these things? <laughs> Okay, there you go. That was my reaction for sure. Freak out. The story. Okay, now let me just show you what. Let me show you what how just crazy that is because let me show you his name. His name is Anthony Esposito, and only the Lord God could do this. It says we've got a perfect plot for the bugs because see, I know the Lord God's coming to destroy the entire earth. He's gonna burn it because the whole thing is an infestation of the serpent race which is feeding the bugs in the pit, the locust army. That's it. That's why the largest altar in the world is a bug. That's why a guy in a slave collar in the Vatican, under the list of Pope, you turn him upside down, and he's a locust coming from the pit. Because the angels that got caught in the system and got inverted turn into locusts from the pit. Okay? It's like a no-brainer. Here we go. Ready? We've got a perfect plot from them. And the Lord tells me, Anthony Esposito. Okay, here you go. Let's see. Ready? Anthony the priceless one, and I'm just going to be blunt. That's what the Lord used me for. That's why I got saved at the Saint Anthony. That's why I got saved in the presence of an angel, Michael. Pray with me, my brother. <laughs> Y'all believe me now, don't you? Okay, yeah. That's why at the end of the alley, when I walked out, it was, Christ, it was Adam in the garden, and then Christ ascending into heaven. Yes, here we go. Look at Esposito. It means to expose, ready? To place outside, and it means to expose, placed outside, exposed. So the Lord's used me to expose the entire locust serpent system. Okay, now I'm going to jump around a little bit because I want to show you something. Here's the Vatican. Here is the bug here is the dead sheep. Here is the chair of St. Peter. And the, the, the bug is harvesting the semen that represents all the angels melting into semen. That's what they harvest is the light. We are these light beings and that's how they harvest us. They got to get us into a host body system. You see this picture right here of this bug with the human face? Do you know where that came from? That came from... Today, I did a little eight-minute video just to check in, and when I sat down to do it, I said, I'm going to give you guys the records going to speak for itself in the last video I just did today. Did you know that when I went to load it up on YouTube, there was a thumbnail that was waiting there, and, and I heard the Lord tell me, like, click on it. Let me show you what, what it was. I clicked on this, and it said... It's Ryan Reynolds. As owner of Mint Mobile, my goal is to spend as little as possible on things like It said, the, this Outer Limits ex episode is so disturbing it will keep you up at night. So that was, that was on, my, on my thumbnail set when I was loading up the video I loaded up a little while ago. <laughs> okay, and I'm like, okay. But I heard the Lord say, click on it. And I clicked on it, and it was this guy talking about when he was a kid... Old boy couldn't get enough. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. I had no idea at the time that this was one of the best episodes of the series. The episode I'm talking about is the Xanti Misfits, which features large alien ant like bugs the size of a rat, right from the tension filled teaser. <laughs> Imagine you're me. You just got home from Florida. The Lord has already told you that here comes a locust army. Get ready. Prepare your hearts. The time of grace is over. And I'm loading up an eight-minute video just to check in to let you know 
I'm going to share all this stuff that happened in Florida. And before I load it up, he shows me exactly what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> Some whacked out old video and there's a race of bugs with, they have human faces. <laughs> That's what's okay. Uh, try and remain calm. Where we first see the alien spacecraft. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah. So anyway, that was a Lord just, I guess, having a little fun with uh, the way he confirms things to me. But I'm telling you, you cannot make this stuff up. You couldn't even think this up. Okay. So let me recap real quick. I've been walking with the Lord since 2002. The mystery was there's a race that looks humanoid. They're insects from the pit. There is a double down race, which is the word Catholic is kataholikos, which means completely down, double down. Then we're, those of us that are being hunted, there is a right side up you and there's an upside down you. There's an eye that goes up, the angel. There's an eye that goes down. The word spirit in the Bible, before you get saved, the word spirit is pneuma and means superhuman angel demon. That's a spirit that's running you before you get saved. When you get converted, converted means turn the opposite direction, turned completely opposite direction. So when you get turned the opposite direction, your eyes become single, both eyes are up, and you've been converted, and you can, you can see... You can see the kingdom of God, and then you get converted, and you get the Holy Spirit set apart. Imagine I ended up at the corner of Peacock and 38, which means consecrated, set apart. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not coming. I guarantee it's coming. So, yeah. And so this is just getting started on my journey. And so... I leave the Bug Reaper place, and then I get to the first place I'm stopping for the night, which was called the Hotel Duval, which was, let me just show you when I checked in what it was. So I had no idea. Look at the key. The key is kind of in a down position, which is really weird. Uh, do you? Let me ask you a question. Do you ever take a t key and go down and open something like that? No, because they did that on purpose. You see, when you turn this upside down, it's like a bug, big eyes, eye, eye, mouth. And so what's coming up from down here? Smoke, like they're they're burning us, like cooking us. Yeah, let me show you just some more pictures from the hotel. Right side up, upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up. It's keys all along the wall. How would, how would you know what the this whole thing was about in this hotel if you didn't know the truth that I know? Why would they have this as a picture on the wall, look at my room. Here's the picture on the wall. It's a key and it's sitting on a mirror reflection and there's smoke coming up. That's, and there I am taking the picture in the background. See it? So see it? There's a key with its reflection and that's what's getting cooked because the angel of the bottomless pit runs that system. And there it is, just in the shape of a key with a reflection being burned. Right in front of your face <laughs> at the Hotel Duval. So that was my first stop on the way. I uh, stayed there. Uh, they wrote this in my room. They wrote on a little pad. They wrote, this is written by hand. Enjoy. Look at the letter E. Is that a U and a U? Enjoy your stay. Told you. I was like, okay, that's super, super creepy. Okay, there it is. And then uh, moved on from the Hotel Duval. I got myself a lot. Now, let me show you something. You see the two, uh, the double fishtails? The, those are mermaids. So those are twin females. Get it? I know two other twin females that did the same thing, too. Just saying. There you go. Mermaid tail down, mermaid Starbucks. You want me to tell you a really crazy thing that happened there? So I ordered a... Triple grande non-fat latte. And I was standing there and I told the girl, I, this is inside the hotel. There's a Starbucks. I said, you know what? I'm going to go out and put my bags in my car. I'll be right back. And I came back in and nobody was behind the counter. It was the weirdest thing. I'm like, where is everybody? I'm standing there and this guy walks up and he's like, 
sir, can I help you? And I go, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I ordered a, a latte. And he goes, oh, uh, she went back to the kitchen to make it. She went back to the kitchen to make it. The cappuccino machine, the latte machine's right there. You know, the little tube stir. <laughs> she comes walking out, and I look at her, and I'm like, she had it in a venti cup, and she she starts shaking. The girl's like, and I, and I go, why would you need to go to the kitchen to make my latte? The machine's right here. I looked at him. I'm like, why would you do that? And they went, and they didn't have an answer. They were, they were like, uh, uh, and I said, that's all right. And I just took it and I walked out and I heard the Lord say, don't drink it. How creepy. Do you see what they wrote on my pad? Enjoy your stay with the W. Welcome to my world, guys. Yeah. So anyway, I tossed that. And then I get to Florida, and I'm there to see a friend of mine, Steve, super nice guy, and where I was there to minister to someone that needed to help. I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about too much of that, but here's one of the guys that was there to dig up, uh, he was there to dig up some trees uh, that had fallen in Steve's yard, and so this is an absolutely insane story, testimony, now get ready. The day before I went over to Steve's, I was praying and I heard the Lord tell me, look at the number of clean beasts that went into the ark. What a weird thing. I was like, very strange. So I went to, I went to Genesis 7 and it said, and of every clean beast thou shalt take thee by sevens. Look at the number. It says 7651, 7651. Look at that. It's the same exact number twice. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. So I click on it and it says as sacred or full one. The sacred or full meaning to complete to seven oneself. An oath to fulfill an oath. And I thought that was very strange. So the night before I went over to Steve's house, the Lord had me in Genesis 7 looking at the number of clean beasts that would go in the ark. I thought it was the strangest thing. Y'all ready to freak out? <laughs> Y'all want to freak out? Yeah? Watch this. Let me show you what happened. So let me show you my room. So uh, the Lord told me this was important. Look at your room. It was 408. I said, okay. My room's important. He said, told me, look at your, look at your thing. Look at this. Hang on. I'm busy. It says insert into lock. And I'm like, what, why, why is this on my door? This is one of those tags that tells you like, you know, tells the people to leave you alone. You don't want to be bothered. But the other people's door, see, look, look at 403. Look at 403. It says, hang on. I'm busy. But look at their thing. It goes over the doorknob. Mine is supposed to go in that slot, and it's upside down. I'm like, what the hell? Why do they have mine as one that goes in and it's upside down? Don't you think that's weird? What about enjoy your stay with a W? With a U, that's not the letter E on that other. By the way, you guys can look at this folder. Remember at, at the hotel before that, I was like, that is super bizarre where all the keys were burning. Look at the letter E. That's not the way you make an E. That's a U and that's a U. Enjoy your stay. Now I'm at this place. And the Lord tells me, look it up. They said, this is the last room we have. It's been smoked in. It's so weird. I was like, what? They go, it's been heavily smoked in. Well, the last place I just left is all these keys that are smoking. I'm like, this is so weird, man. I was like, whatever. I'll take the room. It was a Holiday Inn Express. The Lord told me it's important. Pay attention. It means man of victory. That's what 408 means. And I just thought, that's very strange. So I, 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 uh, I documented it. And then the Lord told me, 
look up the meaning of spruce, the, the wood spruce. Type in spruce in the Bible. I just thought that's strange too. I typed it in and it said the two of them walked on together and it came from Exodus verse 27, 1 and 25. Thou shalt construct an ark of acacia wood. And it's about Noah and the ark. And I'm like, this is just so bizarre. And this is, uh, this looks like I, I, Isaac um, and Abraham walking. It says, and the two of them walked on together. And in my spirit, I heard the Lord tell me, you're walking with me. Just pay attention. Look at Genesis 7. Look at every clean beast went in by sevens. And the word seven means completion. It means, let's look at it one more time. The word seven in the Bible. And look at this. This is so strange. Seven, six, five, one. Seven, six, five, one. It's a covenant prepositionally formed from out. Oh, I'm sorry. As a sacred full one, seven times, and then uh, the root of the word means to be complete, to seven oneself, that is swear, as if by repeating a declaration seven times, an oath. And I heard in my spirit the Lord telling me, you know, I've taken you on this journey just to pay attention. This is just crazy, guys. A <laughs> bug reaper. And the two of them walked on together. Well, the night I got saved after I got converted, after water and light came down on me, and I started walking out of that alley, and Lou touched my shoulder. I pulled my arm away from her. And I looked at her and I said, don't touch me. I'm walking with the Lord. Don't touch me. I'm walking with the Lord. Don't touch me. Three times I told her, don't touch me. I'm walking with the Lord. And so the Lord shows me this. Now, are y'all ready to freak out? Y'all want to freak out? I show up at Steve's after reading Genesis 7. They went in sevens. An oath, completion. I knew the Lord was telling me, you're completing. This is coming to completion, Jonathan. Pay attention. I go over to Steve's house, and he's got some tree guys that have come over to uproot these giant palms. Steve, by the grace of God did not have these palm trees go through his house during the hurricane. That hurricane made landfall where he lives. And these he's got these giant palms, and they fell, and they missed his house. But they're laying on their sides, and the roots are all out, but they're still attached to the ground. So this tree company had to come over and take this machine and grab them and pull these Medusa roots out. And I'm standing there, and I'm telling Steve about the number seven, that the Lord showed me how every clean beast was by sevens, and to look at the, the meaning of the word dove in Genesis. And I was talking to Steve about those biblical things. And I went out to watch the guys pulling up the trees, these guys right here, and there, there I am. And the guy's grabbing one of the trunks of the trees, and he's pulling it. And all this dirt, is coming with the, that Medusa root. So he's pulling it up. And this dirt's going right by my foot. Let me show you what landed on my foot. But let me show you what came out of the hole right there by uh, by Steve's. Uh... Yeah, there you go. See that card right there, that playing card? The number seven. I had just told Steve I was in my hotel room and the Lord was telling me, and Noah, the Lord told Noah, every clean beast you shall load by sevens. And now a guy is pulling up a tree, and the dirt is going by my foot, and the number seven lands by my foot. Guess what the guy's name was that pulled up the dirt from the tree? Noah. <laughs> yeah, his name was Noah. Steve asked him, who do I write the check to? He said, my name's Noah. What I like? Well, let me show you a picture I took that morning out of my hotel, and I didn't know why. Now, this is the hotel where I'm staying right here. It's Holiday Inn Express, and I just look out the window, and for some reason, I, I took a picture of Noah's jewelry 
before I went over to Steve's house. And when I got to Steve's house, Noah, who you see right here, driving the machine, pulling up the tree that you see right here, pulled up a bunch of dirt, and Noah put the number seven on my foot. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> just like, my ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, okay. Let me show you the other side of the card. It says, the southernmost point, home of the sunset. And I heard in my spirit, the time's coming. Let me show you the tractor that this guy was driving. Did you know he's got, he put dragon eyes. So there's a dragon looking up from the pit. See, because the eye's looking up. And on the other side of the machine, he's got an eye looking up. Why in the world? And I asked him, I asked this guy, I said his name's Noah. I go, who put those there? And he goes, Oh, uh, I did. And I go, Oh, so you, you like, he goes, Yeah, I put them on there and I thought they were cool. What's he doing? The dragon eyes are uprooting trees. Did you know in the system that we're in, that the dragon, the serpent, the insect race, do you know what they're uprooting? They're uprooting a tree too, the tree of Christ, which is us. That's why he put dragon eyes on there, because he doesn't know what he's doing. Father, forgive them for they know what. Why would you put dragon eyes looking up on your machine, uprooting trees? Why? Why would you do a song called 0110011 that means free? Why would you do a song called Patient Number 9 where you have entities coming up out of the pit? Let's see. The band, The Warning, 0111, whatever. Binary code, I'm free. The Birmingham Games and The Beast has been set free and has broken its chains and enraged by past hurts and injustices has broken its chains. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women have set themselves free. So it's the same thing. Birmingham Games, the beast has set itself free. The band, the warning, 011, I'm free. Ozzy Osbourne, I'm alive again, revive. Guy on a tractor, uh, on a machine, pulling up trees, is the dragon. Do you find all this a little weird? That Noah set the number seven on my foot as he's pulling up the trees. Do you find it weird that the Lord told me, I want you to go to Florida and my final destination? You have reached your destination. You have arrived at your destination and it's the corner of Peacock and Sanctification. <laughs> okay, there you go. Probably no big deal. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then I'm like, okay, well, I got to go. Uh, so I left this place, and I was there to help somebody, and I had to move on. And then I got out on the highway, and this truck pulls up next to me. I thought it was kind of interesting. JesusChristAll.com. And then I thought, that's just kind of weird. Is that a name? And then it's Jesus Christ Al? Al? I don't know. I just thought, well, that's kind of interesting for that truck to pull up next to me. So I photographed it. And then I arrived at my destination. You have arrived at your destination. I'm at the corner of Peacock and 38th. 38th means sanctified in Christ. And then it, I look in right where I pull up. It says, your moment starts here. And I knew that the end is coming. Then I went to say goodbye to... My child at the corner of Peacock and 38th the next day. And as I drove off down the street, and I do mean down the street, in a residential commercial area in Miami, as I prayed and I said, Lord, do you want me to go to New York? Because in my spirit, before I left San Antonio, you mentioned New York. I heard you say New York in my spirit. 
Am I supposed to drive up to New York for something? Or am I done? And as I drove off from Peacock and 38th and I drove up, I think, 40th Avenue, I looked over and I saw this. I'm like, what in the world is a herd of peacocks to me? <laughs> It's thrilling. Okay, I was driving my car. Listen, I was driving my car and I had to snap photos as fast as I could while I was driving. Look at the one number that gets caught in the picture. 38. <laughs> no big deal. Whatever. Like, those are peacocks. What the heck? I was like, are those peacocks? And I just left Peacock Avenue. And those are peacocks. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool. Look at look at the male peacock in his reflection. I wonder what the odds are. <laughs> it's like so insane. But like, okay. So let me show you my room where I stayed in Miami. I stayed at a Hyatt and I walked on the other side of the bed and I looked across the room. It was, you know, just a no big deal room. And I looked over there and they had this on the wall, and I'm like, huh, what's their art on the wall? Let me show you their art on the wall. That's their art on the wall. Why is their art on the wall only two X's and this? You can see my reflection taking the picture. I'm like, that's the artwork? It's to show who they serve. That's who they serve, two X. Told you guys. Okay, then I went, I sat down at the bar, and I had a nice tea. And I, as I was having my iced tea, I looked over and I went, wow, check out the locust right there. You see the locust right here? That's a locust. And it's jumping this direction. See it? I hadn't noticed this before. I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol, but I don't sit at a lot of bars, but it was the place that I could sit. I sat there and I went, oh, wow. That's called Black Label. It's some kind of alcohol, but it's really a locust jumping. It's not a guy with a top hat. It's it's a locust jumping. See, the whole thing's a bug. That's a leg. That's a leg. That's the head right there. There's the head. There's the leg. There, here's the foot. There's the foot going to the bent leg. There it is. It's a locust. Why is there a locust hidden on... Black label. Did I tell you guys that when I got saved, people were putting black spots on me? Y'all remember the testimony about Juan Farias, the artist in my gallery that came up behind me and put a black dot on my arm? I'm like, well, Juan, why'd you put a black? This is a brand new shirt, dude. Why'd you put a black? I didn't put a black spot. I'm like, yeah, you did, bro. And I grabbed his hand and he had black paint on his index finger. I felt him squeeze me. I went to look at a, a painting he was working on and he walks up behind me. And he squeezes my arm, and I'm like, dude, what's up? Why'd you do that? There's a brand new shirt. I didn't do that. I'm like, uh, yeah. I grabbed his hand. I'm like, dude, you got black paint on your finger. Why'd you do that? I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You're living on the banks of a large river in Africa called Denial, but you did do that? And you have a black, you have black paint on your palette? You know, you had an artist palette with his paints? I'm like, you got black paint? acrylic paint right there you got black paint on your finger i have black paint on my arm i felt you squeeze me you put black paint on. i didn't do that <laughs> i was like okay all right well that's cool whatever you didn't do that and that's when dean barker a friend of mine told me i was like look what juan did how weird is that why would he do that and dean goes oh wow he put a black spot on your back you know what that means and i'm like no and dean goes yeah back in mariner days when guys would sell, when boats would sail across, you know, the ocean, if you were against the captain, they would put a black spot on your back. And everybody on the crew could see that you were the guy that's against the captain. And that if they had an opportunity to push you overboard or to shiv you or whatever, to take it, you were marked. It means you're marked for death. <laughs> black label. It's a bug. <laughs> it's like, okay. There you go. Yeah. So there's a little black label for you. Let's do a let's do a little blended picture just so you can take a look. Is it a bug? 
or is it a guy wearing a top hat? It's both. There you go. And then I stopped at the beach just to get a photo with the beach. I'm like, yeah, the end is here. I blew my shofar. I'm like, I know the end's coming. And then I had to make a drive, and I told the person that I was there to minister to, oh, you know what, let me show you what was in my hotel room. Uh, they had Angel Soft prominently displayed on the back of the commode. See, Angel Soft that you wipe your ass with. Yeah, I think that's super great. And then let me show you the picture right above it. Is that like 9-11 on the clock right above Angel Soft? It sure looks like it, maybe with a little plausible deniability. Uh, there you go. Okay, so... Yeah. Let me show you Chinati. Just to make sure everybody remembers. When I walked into that art gallery the first time and the Lord sent me to Chinati, and I was driving down the street, I, I said, Lord, you really want me to go to the desert and take my wind blades, my LZ? Because I have big wind blades for, you know, setting up my own LZ. And I heard the Lord say, go into that building with wind blades. And I was like, oh, wow, that's weird. There's wind blades sticking up out of the ground. Right when I said, you want me to, take my wind blades and their wind blades are. The timing was insane. And I said, you want me to go in the building with the wind blades? Go in the building with the wind blades, Jonathan. I opened the door, I went in, I poked my head, hey, come on in, how you doing? My name's so-and-so. Yeah, I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes. That's where Chinati is in West Texas, Big Ben. And I'm like, oh, my God. I walk over to the first big painting on the wall, and there it is. It's a shepherd. He's leading sheep. And the sheep are going through the desert in basically Chinati. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. That's impossible. I just asked, Lord, you really want me to go to Chinati and take my wind blades? Go in the building with the wind blades. They had wind blades out front. Look at the name of the artist. Melvin Warren. So I've never seen this before. I, 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 I photographed this right here, the plaque. His name's right here. See it, Melvin C. Warren? You see 1967? So I hear the Lord say, look up 1967, like right now. Like right now. The Lord said, look up 19... I've never seen that before. Let's look at 1967. 1967, for the coming day, for subsistence, for the morrow, give us this day our daily bread. Oh, my God. The substantive appropriate of what is coming on, happening, suitable, apt for the coming day. It occurs in the Lord's Prayer. It refers to God's provision that is needed for each day. I want you to look at that. Do you know that miracle just happened right now? Oh, did you see my body convulse? <laughs> okay. That just happened right now. Right now, the Lord said, look that up. I've never seen 1967 on that painting. What did I pray the night I got saved? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, O Lord, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Did you see the miracle that just happened? Ap, it means aptly substantive. Only occurs in the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> it refers to God's provision that is needed for each day. Literally bread that fits meets the unique demands of the coming day. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, y'all. Yeah, look at it right here. 1967. See, this is what I was looking for right here. His name's Melvin Warren. I've never noticed this right here. The Lord said, look it up just now.
Okay, my brain. Guys. I just, I don't, I don't know what to, um, to say except all glory to God. I have a little video I'd like to show you guys, um, but I'm going to wait uh, tomorrow because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be part of this video. Uh, there's a scene out of a movie called The Ice Age right here where they sing a song called Glorious Food and at the end they make an eye. Um, but I'll make it different. I don't want it to be part of this, but I want you guys to see this. I want you to see the, the name, the name Melvin Warren means chief watchman because I'm the chief watchman for this generation. If you don't believe that, that's okay. But what the Lord's had me deliver, the truth of what he's had me deliver will bear witness against anyone that goes against it. And that means anyone that goes against it. That's all it means. Anyway, so there you go. Praise God. All glory to God, huh? Did y'all see the miracle? Now watch this. Here's something very fascinating. This is me tonight. I went down there tonight to show y'all Peacock Alley. This is where I got saved. I want you to look at something. The light is off. See this? It says one way. And it, the one, it's a, it's a one way alley, Peacock Alley. That's it. And it points, it's pointing right here to this. You know, this building right here. Let me show you the night, the night I got saved. This is what was going on the night I got saved. It was lit up with Adam in the garden and then Christ ascending into heaven because I'm bearing witness from the beginning to the end of the system. Do you understand? The beginning of the angels being slaughtered. The beginning of the world. The end of the world. He's taking his children out of here. Everyone that he's bought back, we rebelled against the Most High. We're his children. We got caught in a host body system that's used to destroy angels. That's what the host body is. It's the forbidden fruit. All glory to God. All glory to the King. His purpose was to make one new man from the two. I was making peace. I love you guys. I'm going to give you guys a hug. I'm going to wish you the best Thanksgiving ever. If you have Christ and you're in Christ, you have nothing to worry about. If you have the key of David, the key of love, read Revelation 3. Because you've kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of testing. Which will come upon the whole world. Do y'all understand the miracles y'all got to see in this video? Do you? Do you understand? The bug reaper is coming. And he's going to kill them all. All of them. And I'm here to say, I'm the deed for vengeance guy. The vengeance of the Lord is coming now for this whole world. The time of grace is ending. The church age is coming to an end, and God's children are going to be gathered. That's all I know to tell you. The record speaks for itself. I don't have to support the record. The record supports itself. The, the testimonies support themselves. You can't make any of this up. No one could come up with the, all these testimonies. They're too perfect. And when I was loading up my last video, this thing right here, this crazy... Outer Limits episode was waiting and the Lord told me to click on it and it's about an insect evasion, invasion and what the Lord showed me when he wanted me to go when he wanted me to go to Florida when he told me to go to Florida he had me go over and look at that painting and the name of the painting was A Strange Storm Coming Price 3 Angel of the Bottomless Pit 200 Locusts and the building I'm in, if you know the, the story behind this building, it's 76 inches wide, which means Adam is Christ's representative. The night I got saved, I walked out. It's Adam in the garden. And then it's 200, which means locusts. So I'm bearing witness from the beginning to the end of what I'm just showing you. <laughs> it's like, 
These are all miracles, all of them. And for those people that have set their face against me, God have mercy on all of you. I mean it. I pray for them. I do. I pray for them. All right, guys. Peace and grace. I hope you guys have an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, enjoy it like it's your very last. I would suggest you live every day right now like if this is my last day, how should I live it? Okay, I love you guys. Peace and grace.